Hey everyone, I'm Micah. And I'm Connor. Today we'll be talking about how the sport of sprinting relates to the laws of physics. We'll then use Connor as an example to explore the factors that make sprinters run as fast as they do. We'll cover factors like top speed, acceleration, and velocity, as well as show you how wind speed and traction plays a role in the success of a sprinter. So first a little background on sprinting. The 100 meter, 200 meter, and 400 meter are all considered sprint events in track because they involve running at close to maximum speed. Today, we headed over to the Los Gatos High Track to record Connor in the 100 meter sprint. We set up markers at intervals of 10 meters, hoping to capture how and when he accelerates throughout the sprint. We recruited our friend Jack to help. He hopped on his bike and he filmed me for this experiment. We used an app called Sprint Timer, which shows when I finished my run and it uses a photo finish. As Connor finishes up his warm-up, he switches out of his trainers and into his spikes. Sprinters wear spikes instead of regular shoes to help increase traction with the track, reducing the energy lost due to low friction. They are also 5 ounces lighter, helping to reduce the overall weight that needs to be carried. When Usain Bolt wore spikes, he probably saved about 12.5 pounds throughout the race when you add up every step that he took. As you can see, the video was a little blurry, but we were still able to see all the marks we made for each of the 10 meters. Connor finished with a time of 12.95 seconds, and now all we have to do is analyze the video frame by frame to find the time it took for him to complete each 10 meter interval. After obtaining the data required, we created a distance versus time graph as well as a velocity time graph. As you can see, I'm pretty consistent throughout the sprint, but there's a few noticeable surges. Just for comparison, here are Usain Bolt's graphs for his world record 9.58 second 100 meters. Bolt's acceleration at the start isn't as good, but as soon as he reaches his peak speed of about 12 meters per second, he is able to maintain it up until the end. I got off to a pretty good start, but I wasn't able to maintain a steadily fast pace throughout the middle portions of the race. Also, my max speed was a lot lower than Usain Bolt about 10 meters a second as opposed to Bolt's 12 meters a second. Another variable we measured was the step count, or cadence. Connor took about 5.4 steps for every 10 meters, while Bolt took an average of just 4.1. Even though Bolt took less steps, his turnover rate was 256.8 strides per minute, which was a bit higher than Connor's 249.6. In addition to analyzing speed and distance graphs, we can also draw out a force diagram for Connor. The main forces in action in this case include the vertical force of the foot into the ground, the horizontal force required to push against air resistance, and the diagonal net force, which is just the hypotenuse of the two. To find the horizontal force, we use Newton's second law, F equals ma. To find the acceleration, we simply took my peak velocity and divided it with the amount of seconds it took to accelerate to it. I weigh 72.5 kilograms, so we multiply the two values to get 52.7 newtons, or about 0.97 newtons per step. Because of Newton's third law, we can also conclude that the wind pushes back at me with a force of 0.97 newtons per step. This horizontal force is basically negligible compared to the vertical force generated. There's no accurate way for us to measure this force, so we have to make some assumptions. Elite sprinters average about 2 to 2.5 times their body weight in vertical force every step. So let's just assume that Connor averages about 1.7 times his body weight. So after doing the math, we can figure out that Connor's vertical force per step is 1208.66 newtons. Since we have two sides of the right triangle, finding the hypotenuse can get us a final net force of 1208.67 newtons per step. The best sprinters in the world generate an unreal amount of vertical force into the ground which pops them back upwards because of Newton's third law. This requires a lot of strength training as well as explosive drill work to achieve. Using Newton's laws of physics as well as what we have learned in the kinematics unit, we can find a variety of different factors that affect sprinters' performance. We can use this data to help better understand our performance as athletes.